All right, no one cares. Oh, uh, yep. All right, time to time to take it That's off. That's it. Well, let's go. All right. Yep. Good show, everyone. <laughs> what? What? Thank God, Kyle's running this shit show tonight. Hello, neighbor. We're here joining us on Murder Hobo Inc. In between the rolls. Excuse me, I need to change my shoes now. Change that <laughs> accent while you're at it. I thought he was going for Truman Capote. <laughs> so, hi, everybody. This is Murder Hobo Between the Rolls. I said that already. I'm saying nicely tonight because I'm the host and I'm better than Frank. <laughs> um, pretty easily. That said. Uh, I forgot what we were talking about. Ah, um, that's why you're the hostess with the mostest. I made the outline tonight, so I didn't write down the beginning stuff that I have to say. So, uh, Frank, take it away. Don't forget to follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube channel if you want to buy stupid shit like ooh, a cool phone cover. That's right, phone cover, duvet, shower curtain, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Take a look at tinyurl.com slash RPG swag. You want me to do my intro? I said, do you want me to do my intro? What's your intro? Hi, everybody. I'm Frank, normally the host, but tonight I just didn't feel it. That's why I'm all bagged out. And I turned it over to Kyle and his crappy outline. Uh, tonight, we've got a really good show. Really looking forward to it. Unless he fucks it up. Take it away, Kyle. Yeah. So tonight we got a nice uh, continuing the episode of giving you guys wonderful ideas on how to create adventures as well as potential adventures. If, if we ever send them over to Frank so he can have them printed up and sent out or something like that. I don't think anyone has. I wasn't planning to anyway. So but, uh, tonight. Uh, We'll talk about last Saturday's game. We'll eventually talk about next Saturday's game. Uh, but first, let's introduce you to the other people. Frank, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Frank. Thank you very much. All right. Blake, pumpkin butt, what's up? My dear. Nice. Carol? I'd say picture or no proof, but there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Carol, sometimes DM, uh, I'm a long time player and mini painter and happy to be here to come up with another scenario on the fly this time. Hey, Carol, who's hosting this show, me or you? Is I don't know. If I so far, I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, hey, so make sure that the audience it. knows we have no idea what we're doing tonight. Oh, yeah, they have no idea what they're doing tonight. Uh, we'll talk about That's that later, true. though. So take control of the goddamn situation, DM. Yeah. Frank, gosh. You're running this show. You're running this shit show, pal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So last weekend, we did a one shot. Uh, 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 no one answered. And so we had to go past the bench into the audience out the stadium and into the garbage pile where everyone throws their trash away on the way out. And we pulled out some special, special people to be on the uh, show tonight. One of them being my wife. Uh, Frank, who was the other person? I think that was my wife. Yes, it was. And the producer. And since my audio was so shitty, obviously I was doing the producing that night too. So, yeah. <laughs> If you, if you're going I, 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 I am actually praising the wife because I did a shit job of the audio. So, if you're going to refer to them, how many times do I have to correct you? It's my wife, my wife, like Morgan Fairchild. You and I are the only ones that are going to catch that. Maybe Carol. Hey, yeah, you're right. I had to. <laughs> anyway, so you think, Frank you think Will Ferrell started Saturday Night Live? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <You> didn't <coughs> wait. There was that Norm fellow, Norman Reedus. I, I remember. I remember when Janine Garofalo was on there. Mm. <laughs> I I remember Julia Louis Dreyfus being on there. She was not on there. 
what she uh, yeah. I know. I, Wikipedia I, that I, shit, I, millennial. I, <laughs> I don't know if I actually was that. Okay, don't. boomer. No, sis, now. All right. Before we get into a fist fight over millennials being better than old people, uh, Frank, since uh, no one else here played other than myself, and I don't feel like talking about it, I'm a little ashamed of what happened. Why don't you start off with uh, what happened on your very well-planned scenario? The very well-planned scenario was three, count them, three adventurers are tasked with going ahead and saving a child, a noble cause in any fantasy world. What turned out was anything but as the three adventurers went ahead, did their uh, subcutaneous attempt at subterfuge, uh, because the child was up for an offering so that the gods of ore could be appeased for the mining colony. Uh, praise or uh, the father of the tribute uh, enlisted the PCs to come in and surreptitiously save his child without letting the other people in town know for fear of retribution. Uh, the party rolled poorly from the get go. And it was hilarious. Uh, we had a, Foot sniffing Goliath Barbarian, a ranger named Blackheart who hates children, and Kyle. So, you know, <laughs> it was destined to fail. Uh, fortunately, fortunately for them, spoiler alert, uh, they all died. <laughs> Everybody, the PCs, the child, the townspeople, everybody fucking died. Everybody. Carol. Take it away as a viewer. All right. Well, that was other than Oh, that, hang on, Carol. Kyle's fault. Go ahead. These two caught me, yeah. Because we were emailing over the past few days and whose fault that was and who, you know, who should be sleeping on the curb because his wife got killed. I think I determined that Kyle should probably be kicked to the curb. Um, but, oh, my God, that was... I'm not, in some ways, I'm not sure what to say about it. It was, it was a great scenario. I really, I like the premise of it, but, you know, when you have a bunch of murder hobos that don't, they hate children, hey, uh, I hey, sense I it. The only person here, ironically enough, that felt like was trying to keep the game on track was Kyle, which is like, wait a minute, what, what alternate universe did I just fall into? Because he's, you know how things usually go on the show if you watch it. Um, so that was surprising. Things ended the way the show usually does because of me. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Where you uh, slept, everybody. What you can't sleep, but you only got your allies. You didn't sleep the enemy. <laughs> what? I, I was like, wow. Now, I yeah. I said, unfortunately, the sound issues they they did kind of hurt my ability to track what was going on at times. And so I'm not even sure. What was that last thing that they were fighting? Uh, a Yeti. Oh, it was a Yeti. Because I said I heard the screech, but then I didn't pick up what it was. Um, it was a bumble. It, <laughs> I, I, I did enjoy it. I did, re I did enjoy it, though, for, for what it was. It was it was nice to see you know nice to see your wife on screen uh, both actually both of you, but I think um, I think you know I think you better both be getting them some really nice Christmas gifts after that. I didn't kill anybody. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure the Yeti, the Bumble, killed people. Uh, the, the Bumble did. killed everybody. You know what? I made sure everyone died peacefully. Well, two of them. The rest of you guys died screaming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you didn't save the child. I was like, what? They didn't see. They didn't even fucking save the townspeople. Mister Morningwood is dead. Thank you. No, Mister Morningwood lives on. I guarantee. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and the foot thing. I mean, I almost. I mean, I, I listened to this while I'm working and the whole foot fetish thing, I mean, licking the feet at all those, I'm trying to work and not die laughing because it was so funny. And so that's the thing about this episode. I thought it was really funny. Um, maybe, I know a lot of our episodes are, but this one kind of stands out, especially in the way it ended. 
So I liked it. Especially though. because you know they were going down on each other afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> this one and Boots and Murder of the Doge. All three. <laughs> So, so Kyle, what was that about your feet? Are, are your feet in that lockbox you mentioned uh, via email? But not yet. It's only when I'm sleeping because, you know, <laughs> I, I, I is don't want to look at the lockbox of Tarantino. <laughs> oh, that, that's what uh, Travolta and Samuel L. were looking at. It's Dewey's footbox. <laughs> exactly. So, Blake, did you catch any of that episode then? No, I just heard the recap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you should watch it, Blake. It, it's worth it. Yeah. It is totally worth it. But you got to was... turn the volume up because yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit soft. I, I was going to say, I, I ran out of vodka. I'll have, I'll have, that'll have to be something for me to listen to in the bathtub later. It's, it's definitely a uh, Jose Cuervo kind of. You know what? Oh. You can you can be heard, but it just really it's. I think it was more the echoey aspect that was making it even more difficult to understand you. But I could hear you, Carol. I like to make the audience focus on the sound of my voice. <laughs> Sorry, what did so you I say wanted say? to take it down a notch. <laughs> oh, we're, doing, we're doing ASMR now. Okay. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm rolling my dice. Find the right button. <coughs> All right. But essentially what I learned is you should take an hour beforehand and talk the new player through the game. Because uh, she was just introduced to it and found out she could talk to animals and insisted on finding... You heard, you heard Ashton talk about it took us three hours to prep the night before. Oh, yeah. No. She just said, I want my name to be Gah and I want to eat dirt. Yeah, I, we're gonna exactly. need to, we're gonna need her to say that that she uh, said that. Actually, for some reason, I got the impression she did come up with the character concept. Just as a viewer, I, I got the feeling because she seemed like she was having so much fun with it. It felt like that that was her that was her idea, um, and she really rolled with it. I, I I loved I loved her idea where she's chasing chasing after squirrels. She, she rolled for what, Doug? Really with it. <laughs> what was the name of the dog in Up? Was it Doug? Doug, yeah. It felt like it was a bit like Doug. Squirrel. You know, that was... I love that part, too. Yeah, no, she did it. I thought for a brand new player, I thought she did She did a good job. And you, and Kyle, you really did a good job helping her through some of the you know, tougher parts. Right up till the point she fucking died. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's the thing. You're not supposed to kill new players. If you kill uh, but, 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 I, I didn't. Frank, God. <laughs> Your hands hand, I am Pontius Pilate. These hands are clean. No. Okay. <laughs> the crowd <laughs> spoke. The you dice spoke. You have Eddie be disinterested and just leave. Uh, <laughs> actually, if you're paying attention at the end, I had both Dar or both Blackheart and Gah <laughs> roll. <laughs> And told yep. them this is what they needed, and neither one of them did it. Yeah, so you did people it die. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> yeah, they're bad. Their dice really bit them in the butt. <laughs> oh, but it was and fun. Lessons learned that day, and we found out and explored new things about our relationships. <laughs> If you need some relationship advice, just, just play a D and D. It really helps. Are you sure you're not sleeping in the doghouse, Kyle, right now? Uh partially she actually wants to come back, strangely enough. That is really strange after because a lot strange. of times losing your character the first time out is rather discouraging. Considering what we are and what this is, I guess it kind of makes sense that it can happen. Well, you know, fans, <laughs> if you are a new player and you want to give it a shot, maybe you can join Gah and Austin in a noob game. Just saying. Just saying. Throwing it out there. Don't do it on Murder Hobo. Just <laughs> <laughs> meet and do it over Discord or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. 
now for the main event. The reason we called the three, the two. Yeah. There were three. Scott was unavoidably pulled away. So you did have the three best DMs. Scott My got pulled away and I got stuck in this job. Best DMs and then Frank. So. I was going to do Naked Snow Angels tonight. Pictures at 11. You <laughs> I can, but tonight we are going to. Going up here. I'm going to talk over Carol because I'm getting my point done. I'm thinking that this is my show, which is oh yeah. You know what? Yeah. I'm only going to use the edge of my seat tonight. Uh, you'll pay for the whole thing, but you'll only need the edge. <laughs> And so, guys, DMs, creators out there, you know, sometimes you hit a rough spot. You hit a rut. You can't come up with ideas. Your penis is flaccid, no matter what that ass shaking in front of you looks like. You're you just, young for that problem. You a bit of help. <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing D&D Viagra. Okay. D&D Viagra. That's right. Oh, it's Lord. random tables. And we're going to make a, uh, 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 an escort mission for you guys tonight, but seeing as we have people who have created one-shots before to varying degrees of success, what are your guys' Hey, The We're double date right. scenario, the doge, and something else. Boots! Boots, that's right. <laughs> Just putting it out there, Frank. Uh, what are your guys' opinions on random tables? Are they helpful when you're in that rut or when you can't make a decision and your wife is walking out the door because you haven't done anything creative in a while? Frank, what do you think? Uh, I like random tables, especially when you've hit the uh, proverbial wall in your creation concept. Uh, a lot of times I find that a, a random role will go ahead and give me a spark of interest and say, okay, you know, let's just roll on a table and see what I got. And then, <laughs> roll a couple of different things and then say, okay, uh, I can do that. But I am probably the world's greatest DM. So, you know, uh -huh. uh, but no, I, I like random, uh, especially when you've hit a rut hit the wall, uh, have no idea what you're doing, or, uh, you just want to throw something together to go ahead and keep your, uh, skills sharp because, uh, essentially, thinking on your feet is the greatest aspect a uh, DM can have, honestly. Listen to those improvised words. Matt Mercer, eat your fucking heart out. That's right. This is not scripted shit here because we aren't that prepared. <laughs> oh, that is so funny, Frank. Our next person, the younger DM. Blake, what do you think? About <laughs> uh, here, let me let me use my script. <laughs> never never use them. <laughs> never use them. Never use them. I I I'm curious to see how this goes. I I'm usually able to come up with something something body out of my ass uh, easily enough. Yeah. But, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm taking this as a learning exercise. Sure. And uh, finally, me. I think that random... <laughs> oh, Carol, Carol, I'm sorry. You were sitting there at the edge of my vision. I didn't see Carol. Yes. Yeah. On random tables. Have uh, you needed the help as much as Frank has? Actually, actually, the funny thing is, not really, because either I do... I do a lot of campaigns. I don't do as many one-shots. Um, and when I come up with a one shot, I start, I work from the, you know, the big boss down. So I figure out what they're doing and that, and I don't tend to need random tables. And if I'm running a campaign, I feed off my players basically, creatively. I base it on what they're doing. Um, but no, I mean, I absolutely can see the point of this. If you're really stuck for, if you're really stuck for something to throw at your players that week, you know, and you are in a rut. Yeah. I think this is definitely a good way to go. So I haven't tried it, but I am tonight. So we'll I'm a it. really old DM, to be fair. I'm I'm pulling crap out of my ass, unlike Blake. Yeah. I, my my stuff's all old. 
The first time I gave myself an enema, I learned that gum really does not digest. <laughs> <laughs> that would explain all of your adventures so far. <laughs> Don't swallow gums, kiddo. Good Lord. See, we're appealing to the youth. <laughs> all right. That's their opinion. Some of them have needed the help because their crotchety old loose minds can't uh, spring forth and come up with a new idea. And then there's like, we've been there. We've done that. Everyone else. And so tonight uh, I have tables rolled up. I given everyone the opportunity to add to these tables. Uh, they have not. I finally understand Frank's, uh, Frustration. Frustration. <laughs> Sorry, I've been. Like, Son of a bitch, people, give me. Some. <laughs> That's why you got to pull shit out of your ass. We didn't have any actual instruction. Like even going into this, I'm still like, am I supposed to come up with something? I'm gonna. Oh, okay, sure. Okay. No, I got the idea. We're supposed to actually add to it, but I just didn't have any. <laughs> it's been nuts for me. So turns out that Carol As needed a random table for inspiration to add to my random tables. Exactly. Uh -huh. I did because uh, some of them were pretty complete. I was like, but but I thought of things and then I'm like, yeah, but they go under that category and they go under that one. So I really couldn't figure out what to add. Sure. But I also didn't really have time to really think about it either. Yeah. So my work's been nuts. That, you know, last week, well in advance to everybody. No. Anyway, I'm not sore about this whatsoever. Don't <laughs> worry. I'll be okay. But uh, first, we are going to uh, figure out, uh, let me look at my script here, an escort mission. And Hookers! So you're good to go. Uh, Frank, we're going to start off with you. Uh, Frank is designing a level four for four PCs or three PCs. I don't know. Four. Uh, Frank? Let's figure out where you're starting from. Give me a D8, please. I can actually probably keep that. Trey, baby. All right. Roll again, please. D8 again. D8 again. Five. Five. All right. So you are starting off in a castle. Whatever you're escorting, you need to escort to a battlefield. Uh, <laughs> Got oh, it. Roll me another D8. Let's uh, figure out what kind of area you're traveling through. Three? Three. Uh, this is a castle in the middle of a desert, apparently. You're traveling through a desert to get there. And uh, finally, let's go ahead and give me a D12 twice, please. Five. Mm -hmm. One. All right, you're transporting some sort of magic item. And finally, give me a one, two, three, four, five, six. Give me a D8 again. Seven. Seven. Someone of the lower class hired you to escort this. All right? Okay, got it. All right, that's all fine stuff. I actually should have written that down. I got it. Desert, magic item. It's for me, Frank. It's for me. A desert castle going to a battlefield, uh, taking a magic item, and was hired by a uh, lower cast individual. Uh, and now we have Blake. Blake, uh, he is doing four PCs at a level 12. Blake, why don't you go ahead and give me the first E8. Okay. Oh, hang on. Give me a second while I get my dice together. Jesus, Kyle. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm used to that. <laughs> Two. Two? Usually he's you are going to be starting from a temple. Roll oh. a D8 again, please. Eight. Going to a cemetery. Okay. That rates itself. Doesn't it? Uh, let's figure out what you're traveling through to get there. Uh, another D8, please. Three. One more planes. <laughs> Three. Uh, roll again for me. Six. Six. You are traveling through the woods to get to your cemetery. 
Okay. Say hi to grandma. <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll a D12 for me twice. Okay. Uh, nine and eight. Nine and eight. You are traveling with a volatile pet. Uh, as we discussed earlier, volatile, dangerous in some way, or perhaps very fragile. I have to figure out. <coughs> the temple and a pet to the cemetery. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, this, this literally writes itself. Okay. It really does. Oh. Uh, I feel like I'm on. Roll yeah. me a last D8 for who hired. Daryl, quit talking over Kyle. I can't hear him. <laughs> <laughs> it ends is sweet. D8. No, one more eight. Okay. One more eight. Uh, seven. You have been hired by the, uh, a middle class okay. person. Uh, did, did I miss anything that the, the two 12s were just for the pet? Two 12s were just for the pet. Okay. <laughs> and finally, we have Carol, who, um, in her mediocrity, decided to go with the median and go with four level eights. Carol, sure. you added your last. You get so much time to think about I'm not buying time for Frank right now or anything because they don't need the time. Yeah, I'm almost done. <laughs> All right. Carol, go ahead and roll me a D8. Where are you starting at? All right. Let's see. That would be th uh, three. Which I you think are is starting at a castle. Same one Frank rolled. Oh, uh, go ahead and roll again then. All right. Oh, wow. Uh -huh, uh -huh. well, apparently, I'm supposed to be destined for the. All right, at six. six. You know my lucky number. You are starting out in a small little hamlet. All right. Oh, people are pigs. Um, roll a d8 again. Where are you going to? Two. You are going to the temple. Huh. I know. Exciting. Roll please, another. Please D8. be a venomous D8. pet. Roll a what? Sorry, roll a what? D8. Frank, D8. stop talking over me. I'm better than you. I was talking <laughs> over Carol, actually. <laughs> My ass. Uh, another six. Another six. So that's my lucky number, apparently. Roll, roll again. I, I don't like when you guys repeat. <coughs> Five. All right. You are traveling through an urban environment. Nice. Perhaps this hamlet is actually a suburb. <laughs> it's Romney. <laughs> what was six? What was six on that? <laughs> that was the woods. Anyway. That would have been would have worked. D12. All right, right. D12. Wow. The first one is four. Four. All and right. Then. Then. Yep. And three. <laughs> four and three. I really want you guys to match because I'd make you roll twice on that table. You are carrying volatile treasure. Ah, that sort of worked for what I originally thought about for this. That's right. Carol's cheating and already planned something out. No, I, 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 oh, I have to roll one final D8. Oh, one final D8. Okay. One final D8. One. One. Uh, you were hired by a noble, strangely enough, to carry their treasure somewhere. <laughs> volatile. What the hell is volatile treasure? I'm trying to. It could, be, it could be something that's extremely, extremely fragile, or it could be a something. A baby. <laughs> oh, that would be both. <laughs> All right. Frank, just to reiterate, you had the castle to the battlefield through the desert with a magical item and someone from the lower class. Very befitting, considering that you are <laughs> level four. Pretty what much. Up with so far? Uh, I have come up that uh, you are at King Bowser's castle, uh, and the magic item in question is a potion of sweet water that uh, Granny Smith wants you to get to her grandson because he is in a desert battlefield and he is going to need to hydrate. Otherwise, his skin is going to suffer. Sweet, sweet old granny watching out for her grandkids. That, that is a truly it's a beautiful story, man. I, it, you know, it, it, it tugs at my heartstrings. It, yeah, absolutely. And, oh, and they're, they're fighting the, 
Miyato Enclave because Miyato is the last name of the guy who created Mario and Luigi. Oh, oh that, that, that is great. So uh, does it pretty much start with them on their way there or do you start in the castle? Uh, it's going to start there just outside the castle. Just outside the castle. That way yes. you, you can see Granny, sweet old Granny. All right. I, 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 I think Granny might be evil though. That's, that's interesting. We'll just, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to pull the curtain back yet. <laughs> All right, Blake. For your level twelves, uh, what's happening there? Uh, just to reiterate, you're going from a temple to a cemetery. Mm -hmm. Going through the woods, you have a volatile pet that could smell dangerous. Uh, and you were hired by someone of the middle class. What happened? So, uh, in my scenario. Uh, you are passing by a temple uh, when uh, you notice that there is a funeral going on uh, and the mourners uh, see that you are being brave adventuring types uh, commission you to uh, escort uh, your dearly departed daughter-in-law's uh, uh, rot grub swarm nice. to the cemetery so that they may finally rest with her. <laughs> that, that, that is interesting i will give you that is the rock grub swarm just because she owned them or was it uh, uh is it part of a ceremonial thing where oh know, no 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 no, no no she 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 raised them from from from, from just little rock grublings <laughs> she had she had it was like her ant farm <laughs> okay and uh uh well, we'll figure out where the trouble comes with having a bunch of rot grubs uh, as as the pet. They're, 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 they are essentially encased in a glass terrarium. Ah, okay. So you don't want to break them open otherwise. Trip, trip. <laughs> I, I was going to say that would be that would be potentially bad. Plus, I'm like, if you lose any, then you don't get paid. Oh, yeah. There you go. All right. And Carol, I have bought you all the time in the world. Yeah all the time in the world when you are ready i'm ready <laughs> okay so when you said fragile something struck a chord all i could think of was fragile and the silly leg lamp from christmas story so what i've come up with is archaeologists uh that were hired by a nobleman have been digging just outside a hamlet and they dug up this strange, um, this strange item that kind of looks like a leg, uh, and is very fragile. And they're hiring the PCs to bring it to the temple in town to have it evaluated because it might be some weird holy relic. They don't know. Yeah. It's a noble. That's what I came up with in like five minutes. So. Five minutes. Come on. Blake bought you more time than that. I don't think it was that long. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's I like it, it, it wasn't. We're actually booking right through this. We really are. We might actually get to the end of the outline. Unfortunately, my uh, outline doesn't have an ending to it, so this isn't good. <laughs> we can we can vamp. We can, we can stretch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah that's, I can't. That's, I'm done. I'm spent. I'm over. It's gone. <laughs> That's what the random tables are here for, Frank, to keep you going for at least four hours. Uh, well, I'm going to get up and leave then. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the premise of the adventure, what's happening, what kind of the areas we're going through. Um, why in the world has an adventuring party been hired in the first place? What really makes it dangerous? And uh, assuming there's someone going to be against you, uh, Frank, why don't you do me a favor and roll a d4 twice? Deuce four. Deuce and a four? All right. <coughs> Frank, you have personal rivals of the party who are uh, going to be your villain or your antagonist. In the party? Um, or like a separate NPC party? Separate NPC party. Gotcha. Uh huh. 
And then I am going to have you roll a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a D eight for me. Two, two. Uh, they set up a poor ambush along the way. We'll have you design that at some point. Got roll it. Another D eight for me. Six. Uh, somewhere along the line, the people who are carrying your magic item is going to mutiny. Whether it's a horse, whether people are carrying it, they're going to turn on the party themselves and cause a little bit of mayhem. And finally, roll me one more thing of D8. Deuce again. Deuce again? Yep. Yeah, roll a D100. 30, 30, 30, zero. Uh, and at some point frogs are going to be a part of your, uh, <laughs> actually that works well for me. I thought it might. This is for level four PCs. Blake, you're level 12 PCs. I, I and I'm actually going to make a correction to my statement. Since they are level 12, they have to carry the rock grubs in them. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That that's there. Time constraint, go. nice. Yes. <laughs> this is the inspiration we're hoping for. All right, Blake. Give me You're a the inspiration. I, I was distracted by the by the amazing uh, serenade. Uh, what, 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 what am I rolling? It was so quiet that you had to lean your ear in and listen to it. <laughs> I, I know. I, I, it's, it's almost as if I was intentionally trying to ignore you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a D4. Let me know if it matches. D4? Twice. I got a four. Oh, oh okay. Mm -hmm. Twice. It does not match. Three and four. Three and four? Okay. Roll a D10 and a D4. Uh, nine and four. Nine and four. All right. Um, you have some sort of plant monster that knows about these rock grubs, or perhaps they feed on it, uh, that is going to intentionally try and stop you and cause issues for you. Do me a favor. Roll a D8 for the first one. Uh, we got an eight. All right. Eight. All right. Do me a favor. Roll a D100. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> uh, third, uh, 93. 93. You're going to, first encounter is going to be a band of druids. There's going to be seven of them. You decide whether that ends violently or peacefully. Uh, roll another D8 for me, please. Uh, we got a six. Uh, a mutiny is going to happen. Whoever is going to carry this is not going to be happy about it. Um, it could be the rock grubs themselves that are just bursting forth and causing more trouble. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and finally, for your last encounter, another D8, please. Uh, seven. Seven? All right. Ooh! Roll two more times. Of, this, of the eight? Yep. Uh, another seven and another seven. Holy shit. Okay. Um, Everybody dies at the end of your adventure. <laughs> they are infested with rock rubs. <laughs> Roll a D100 twice. Twice? Twice. Oh, jeez. Okay. Wow. I was going to say, this is a lot of rolling. It, well, you rolled uh, a roll twice deal, and yeah. I oh. think I can make you have seven things in one. Uh, three and 33. Three and 33? Let's see. You are going to have a tornado. And a fire as your last encounter. Uh, whether that's caused by elementals or something or, like that. Or, or, if, that's, or if that's one, one incident, instance. It's one instance. Okay. Fire and tornado all at once. Got a fire, got a fire nado. Okay. 
<laughs> I, no, I'm, 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 no, I'm, I'm still, uh, this is all doable still. I'm with you. Yeah, sure. And Carol, are you ready? Yeah. Who is your villain? Please roll me a d4 twice. Okay. Three and four. That was pretty four. Okay. The escorted item in question is your villain and does not apparently want to get to the temple. All right. So I'm going to, so obviously it's, forget the leg lamp thing. It will be some unholy relic that they're trying to get to a temple. The so leg lamp isn't an unholy relic? It, well, I guess it could be. <laughs> I never really thought it had intelligence. All right. So the item, it's, oh my God, that is. This almost would work with that friggin' thing I had last, with the, the staff I had uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, too bad you but, didn't uh, get that and roll out on your Lux. Uh, go ahead and roll a D8, please. All right, uh, D8. Your first encounter. Six. Six. This is the six, yeah, six. Six, my liking number. Your leg is gonna cause a mutiny. Roll again. All right, I had an idea, because everyone seems to be rolling that four. That four. Uh, a perfectly laid ambush. For, uh, mm -hmm. Maybe they're not even for the leg. Maybe they're trying to stop the leg, too. And finally, for your third one. All right, and eight. So that's what, isn't it? Roll a D100 for me, please. <laughs> Twenty four. Oh, that's yeah. And roll one more time. The D one hundred. Okay, so twenty six. Do I need to re-roll that again? Twenty four and twenty six. Yeah. A scorpion stampede. <laughs> I don't like that. In a city though. Make it work, Carol. That's your oh, job. In eyes. I see a lot of religious overtones in this. Uh... All right, so. that, that's because your characters are all going to see Jesus when they die. <laughs> are you talking right. about this Saturday? That's true. <laughs> <coughs> all right, Frank, we're back to you. I think I bought enough time for you. Yep. Who are the personal rivals going to be? The personal rivals are going to go in, uh, going to be an NPC party uh, that are aware that Teddy has requested some sweet water potion from his granny Smith as they captured a missive. They decided to let it go in the hopes that uh, Granny Smith would come through with the sweet water and go ahead and deliver on it. They are not, however, the main villain. Or they are not the deadly encounter, I should say. Oh, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, they set up the poor ambush uh, <laughs> using an old wagon and some chests. Is this how you want me to do this? Yeah, yeah. Tell okay. me. So one of the first encounters they're going to do is uh, on their way across the uh, Sagan Wastes, uh, they come across a broken down wagon with some chests. The Say NPC. Again. I'm sorry? Say again. The what, were Sa the what? What were the wastes called? Sagan. Carl oh, Sagan Waste. Okay. Uh, they've set up this uh, broken down wagon with some chests to lure the party in. They've then put some dust diggers, uh, three of them in fact, to make it a hard encounter. Uh, and they are watching from a secluded position to see if the dust diggers go ahead and take effect on it. Uh, the ambush uh, leads to a three-pronged trail. The straight trail leads through the mud flats where the most deadly encounter is. The other two circumvent the mud flats uh, on the way around or through uh, their camels, which they're using to traverse the desert, uh, kind of get pissy and they'll have to chase it through the mud flats at disadvantage because it is uh, undesirable terrain. Uh, once they get to the other side of the mud flats uh, where the trails converge is an adolescent froggy moth. Uh, a rare creature to say the least, uh, but also a very deadly creature. Should they manage to get past this 
enormous thing. Uh, they will come in at the back of the front lines where they will be jacked by the difficult NPC party who wishes to grab the sweet water in the hopes that it will benefit the army. Either way, it's a potion of flying because Granny Smith wants Teddy to come home. <laughs> oh, that, that's great. Yeah. Mm. And, and that sticks the party at the front line since they let his ass go. They got to finish the fight. All right. Do you have them uh, start the fight or do you end the one shot there? and make a continuation of it at another time. I would uh, make it a continuation because a large scale battle takes a lot of time unless, you know, they blew through it, but I've got uh, the ambush with the dust diggers that should take maybe 20 minutes or rolling. Mm -hmm. Uh, Then they have to make their choice on going around or the mud flats uh, and chase their creatures. Uh, if they're in the mud flats, it's at disadvantage. If it's outside the mud flats, it's normal. So that'll take about eh, 10 minutes, probably. The froggy moth uh, is going to be a fucking handful, even if it is an adolescent, because an adult is a, what a... 10. CR is it 10. a 10? Yep. Yeah, it's CR 10. So uh, even at a CR four or five rather uh it's still going to take them a good long time to do that then they're going to have to knock off the npc party which is going to be difficult but doable uh so i think the full scale battle uh would best be served later unless they can persuade the general to let them go after teddy and bring him back to justice because this isn't their fight okay yeah good point and so does granny give them uh gifts to help them on their way there, or is she waiting until they do the deed to actually? Granny will give them the camels, the dromedaries to get them across. Uh, She will promise them a great reward, knowing full well that those fuckers are going to be dead. (laughs) And she will (laughs) renege on them. All right. right. So they get to kill a octogenarian when they get back. Murder elbows. Those lucky sons of bitches. (laughs) Okay, Boomer, we're taking you out. There it is. <laughs> All right. Uh, Blake, with your level 12, I honestly only remember the fire tornado and a plant being as part of your problem. But uh, who's your villain? Uh, so uh, my primary villain was some sort of a plant monster. Uh-huh. Uh, which... I am uh, going to go ahead and calling back from the last one, I'm going to bring back my corpse flower. Nice. Uh, that the party is going to potentially is going to potentially see these corpses litter, littered about and say, aha, maybe I don't have to carry these things inside of me. Maybe I can find, oh, maybe really? I found a suitable, uh, suitable host for the transportation. And in deciding to do that, they enrage the corpse flower and, uh, uh, there's a combat that ensues uh, uh, after determining and, and de- how many of the corpses the uh, flower uh, has to consume in order to uh, I'd, I'd pretty much almost cheat it so that there wouldn't be any left. Mm-hmm. Um, but then uh, con- going deeper into the woods, they encounter a band of druids uh, that call this area home. This is that this is their sacred area. They, that they, this is, you know, there's a large tree nearby. It's their temple. I don't fucking know druids. Uh, <laughs> uh, they, they are wary of the party. They don't necessarily want them to cut through the area that they're going. They suggest, you know, that they're, they would encourage them to detour. And in exchange for detouring around this area, they would be willing to heal them. Uh, some of the damage that they've been uh, dealt during the, you know, still having the rock grubs in them. Sure. Uh, but they'd also be willing to fight if they want to go through. That would be up to the party. Sure. Uh, uh, after, the, after that encounter, uh, one of the party members just is, becomes, I would, I, would, I would make him make a couple uh, wisdom saves probably. And if he fails a couple wisdom saves, uh, the pain becomes too excruciating and he mutinies. And in doing so, he calls forth an Afriti. That's my fire tornado. Oh, okay. 
to to cauterize to cauterize these wounds and finally rid him of the burrowing uh, flesh parasites. Nice. And that is going to be the final encounter: is trying to essentially not not get hit by fire from this thing so that they die. <laughs> now, if they try and run away from this thing, are they busy digging up a corpse to give the rock grubs to and then bury This thing is this thing is a said this would still be like a quarter mile out from the cemetery. Oh, okay. Okay. So this this would be, you know, we're we're on the home stretch but it just becomes too much for the one party member to to bear even for that for that for that distance. Sure. Man, that would kind of suck if you just had like a bunch of fire genasi or something. It's like, yeah, you got to carry these rock grubs and they end up cooking before you even. I, get I, I, yeah, I, I would, I, I, I would have to accommodate that uh, on, on a case by case basis. But yeah, grubs. <laughs> but but no, yeah, the some he has the means somehow to summon an afridi, and and that's that's definitely my fire tornado though. Yeah, no, I like that. I like that. Just a little bit more going back onto the rot grubs. Are you rolling damage throughout the one shot that they? Take? I would probably be. I would probably have a total of a twelfth level. I think they do one d six. I would essentially have given each player one, and I would be rolling every quarter mile, and I'd say it's two miles. Don't isn't there a time limit on? Before it burrows to the heart, or is that still no? It's just if you reach zero. If you reach zero, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because in first second edition, you had a finite time, and there's 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 technically a finite time in which they can be killed by fire. But I would I would be willing to fudge that for these because they're they're well trained. They were the daughter in law's pets. They like to stay on the surface because they like the human contact. (laughs) So creepy. (laughs) I love it so much. All right, Carol. Ready? I've bought you all the time in the world. <laughs> okay. I have planned this entire thing out perfectly. As long as you take about eight minutes, and then we'll take <laughs> minutes to finish everything up. Oh God, I don't think I'm going to take eight minutes on this. Uh, uh, I got five bucks, so she can. <laughs> I probably can. And I've got the talent. I'll take that bet. <laughs> <I'm not> too <laughs> sure. I can vamp. I can vamp now. Um, so, so your evil fragile table lamp leg <laughs> is or some thing. miscellaneous unholy relic, which could be the table leg lamp from Christmas Story that archaeologists, being hired by a noble, have dug up. Okay. Uh, so basically, I got. Uh, the, the thing that's working against the PCs is the item. Right. So it's like, all right, well, why not make it have some abilities to mind control people and summon things? Because sure. that's what it kind of worked out as. So the mute, basically the mutiny is obviously this thing, and I would start with the mutiny. It's the, probably the smallest one, the easiest one the PCs can, can deal with. It doesn't have to be a fight per se. Sure. But basically someone, it's going to basically twist one of the NPCs that's going with the party. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to twist them into trying to take it and make away with it. <laughs> to which you said, you know, you can probably, t- you don't have to kill him. You don't have to be a murder hobo like here and kill him. You but just you can him. be. <laughs> you can, you can <laughs> sit him or whatever. You can, there are ways to deal with it. And that's how I would handle the mutiny. So it sounds like you maybe have an urban chase going yeah. on it? If it. Yeah, unless, I mean, they can make a perception check real quick, too, to, to you know, it all depends on how the dice roll. That well, could be the work, that may I make a suggestion? Random table for your urban chase. It's True. a cat dealer. True. <laughs> um, then the second part was a perfect, all right, so actually, I'll skip the the uh, perfect uh, ambush for last because to me that makes a great last battle. The scorpion stampede. So because it's we didn't actually you know have an environment. I'm like, well, the city could still be out in the desert. This could be very Indiana Jones like. Sure. As they're walking through, you know, and they let's say they're still sort of near the outside of the city. 
I say this thing reaches out and finds a nest of scorpions and summons them all to it. You know, and I was thinking you'd have one level three giant scorpion and a whole bunch of the level zero regular scorpion scorpions. I, I'm not exactly sure how many level zero she's doing because level zero is not really There's enough to stand and destroy things. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's just it's just supposed to be. A, I think I said. I think if I could cram in ten, that would be cool. So ten little ones and one big guy. And then they come running through the town and attack the PCs. So the PCs will have to take them out. It won't just stampede them. Um, and then the last one is the, the perfectly laid ambush. So since the PCs were hired, so word had to get around about this item, you know, about what they were doing. So I figured zealots from whatever religion that that thing might be part of, um, and then, and then the reality, it's going to this a temple to be locked away rather than uh, examined. But let's say, let's say we go, we go that route. And um, so a bunch of zealots have set up a perfect ambush on like, you know, they know the route because you have to get, get to, the, to the temple. And they set up on a side street so it's not as busy and it's a little smaller. Mm -hmm. And they have, you know, a bunch of um, ranged attackers all concealed themselves in behind windows and balconies and whatever is in the area. And then they have some more tanky fightery types that are down on the ground and will rush out and everybody's hiding. So that will hopefully be a fairly long um, and, you know, ending worthy combat. Yeah. So, say yeah. It sounds a little bit it, like the mummy. And that you get the, it sounds a little bit like the mummy. They the Scorpion King. Yeah. I didn't really think about that. I was, I was more stuck on Christmas story. You got the scarabs uh, that uh, are now scorpions stampeding around. The item itself I, is affecting and causing ooey things to happen. And then the Magi lay a perfect ambush to. Uh, Oh yeah, that's true. I was like, I wasn't thinking of that quite in those terms. I said I was thinking more Indiana Jones with the Nazis and and the Ark of the Covenant, which also is the same type of thing. That item, Carol, Carol that was last between the rolls. We're doing random tables this time. Well, I wasn't cool. here for the last one, and that was the, <laughs> wasn't it? Right. Hang on, random <laughs> table. Uh, the villains are uh, the Von Trapp family. Go. <laughs> <laughs> not the nazis you're a real german the von traps are the evil ones go get them rolf is a hero kids <laughs> after all you know if you ask um ask carrie you know she would absolutely say they were the enemy hey carrie knows that that is my favorite movie Yes, just like Tommy Lee Jones. I love the sound of music. I like it too. Although they did not take you for a sound of music person. I prefer That's Little Shop. Watch uh uh Tommy Lee Jones was in a movie with cheerleaders and uh oh, one of the cheerleaders okay. was talking about it is like, Oh yeah, I love this movie, bang, bang, blah, blah, and he goes, I like the sound of music. <laughs> just got it all. Cool singing, cool clothes, nice atmosphere, Nazis. <laughs> Guns, you know, got it all. <laughs> but let's flip it. The Von Trapps, the evil ones. <laughs> I always hated that fucking Liesel. <laughs> <laughs> That's because, Blake, you're incorrigible. <laughs> I don't get that reference, and I'm glad I don't. He, the youngest boy. What does incorrigible mean? Yeah, still don't get that joke, and I'm glad I don't. Watch the fucking movie. It's a classic. I can't even, I can't even <laughs> stand the fucking Gwen Stefani music video. Uh, who's All that? Right. All right. <laughs> Yours ends with an evil object being locked inside a temple. But what if yeah. the players are swayed and rather walk off with it themselves? Mm. What's that? I said, what if your players are swayed and rather decide to take this magical artifact for their own? Well, that, the, dead, the dead aren't gonna miss it. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, the whole mind control thing kind of might kind of sort of be a deterrent to them. 
I suppose one of them could get flipped. Yeah. That would be interesting. I mean, those are all things I would explore beyond beyond this outline. Sure. So, and maybe it might be an interesting thing to go in a campaign because of that very reason. Yeah. You know, to see see what they do with it and what to do in the following week after this. <laughs> well, hey. Carol, you ruined it. You vamped too much. We're not going to end perfectly at nine o'clock, but. It's not right. I made these random tables for you. Some of them I stole from other players. Carol, you did a wonderful job, I thought, uh, since I have to be nice a little bit every once in a while. Uh, but Wait, wait, wait. Do you want to hear how they have to get the rock grubs out? Yeah. Is there a thing? Give it to me. Please say tongs. <laughs> <laughs> Ritualistic branding around the entry site to try and drive it out. Oh. Ow. <laughs> I, I give your scenario a C. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just pictured like when you have to hold like a, like that, like a, like a lit mat, like a burnt out match to the ass of a tick. Yep. Yep. That's kind of what I was thinking. God, please don't say that. <laughs> That happens. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> when I was a kid, that Frank, happened. you should have had giant ticks in yours. Well, I didn't roll that. I so. didn't roll for giant ticks. Yeah, I I didn't roll for fucking dust diggers, but I added that shit because yeah. I am a complete DM. And th and that's why we always have more encounters than we actually get through on in one shot. That, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Better to have it that way, though. Better to have too much than not enough. Well, you can always roll again. True, but I mean... Carol, that's the whole point of the episode. You, no, no, no. Don't detract from the episode. You can I always roll again. You can this show. All right. Guys, Hi, is it as easy as you thought it was, Kyle? No. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Frank. I'm in control now. So, Frank, we'll start with you since you're being the wise ass. Did you feel yourself uh, stunted or inspired? With inspired, you. definitely inspired. Uh, I, mm -hmm. Again, I, I like the random tables because they make me think outside the box in this particular uh, exercise. Uh, we were under a time limit, so I knew that uh, Blake would have about the same amount of time and then Carol would have the same amount of time, so I had to get it done. Uh, so I liked it, and uh, yeah, Anything I'm going to write it up. Questions? I'm sorry? Anything you weren't expecting that really kind of threw you for a loop? No, no, yeah, no. He's no. the great DM. It, guys, he's been no, here. it's it, like I always say. I'm not a great DM. I just have a bigger well to draw from. So uh, the more experience you get as a DM, uh, the less likely you are to be surprised. So, and uh, I actually had a request from a convention to use a frog and moth, and voila, I just have to scale it down. So no, I, uh, I, I, I mean, it's I'll PDF it over to you guys, but that bitch is almost done. Wow. There you go. Congratulations, Frank. I knew you could finally make an adventure. <laughs> One that didn't suck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Blake, you <laughs> inspired. Um, anything that threw you for a loop? Yeah, I, I'm actually half tempted to try and run this one too, knowing that Eric Hall would, would volunteer to carry all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and Eric Hall, you take 48 damage. All right, are you ready to begin the adventure? <laughs> <laughs> no, I am not. <laughs> so I hope he doesn't want <laughs> but, but, but no, that, that was actually... Uh, it's in my pee, -pee hole. <laughs> and, you would ha and then in that case, they would have to be uh, extracted orally. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but no... Uh, it was, it was a real good exercise. I, I mean, I did not go into it. I was, I was, I went into this thinking, okay, yeah, I'll make a joke about having to take a hooker from A to B because it was an escort quest. Didn't, and I'm like, oh, hey, I did not plan on coming up with this, but I'm like, shit, it's, it's a thing. Like, uh, but I, I would encourage uh, anyone that wants to do this as an exercise to keep yourself to a time limit because. If I have too much time to think, then I'm not actually uh, 
then I then I then I find I found myself trying to Correct exactly how far how far can I stretch this with still being in the constraints that I'm setting for myself? And I I don't think that I don't think that it it needs that. Well, I think so what, you went from the glass jar of grubs to well, no, you have to carry this in your body, and that was great. Just oh, oh yeah, yeah, no, I, that, that wasn't a, that wasn't a time constraint issue. That was a, I picked rock grubs as the last thing that was the volatile pet, and I was just picking something off the thing, and I'm like, oh well, wait, no, that. So. But but I, I would still say don't don't spend too long thinking. Go with your go with your first instincts, and if something better pops up, you can switch it. But don't don't overthink it. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, anything that threw you for a loop really hard on that one? Did really? No. I, I expected the fire tornado too, but I'm like, you know what? No, that sounds like someone summoning it. I'm like, a genie a Genie can go uh, like gaseous form. And so I'm like, no, it's a fucking fire genie. He calls on a fire genie to wish the fucking pain away. All right. Carol, were you stunted? Not really. A little short with uh, the roles that we handed you. Small maybe, I was gonna say maybe a little with the scorpion stampede, but I just had to rethink the environment. Um, yeah. It can make anything work. As for, oh, as for your original question, yeah, it, was not inspired? Yeah, it did, this did actually. Um, I never would have come up with this on my own probably. Um, so yeah, this is this is a good exercise if you really have if you really are stuck for ideas, um, you know. And now I have an idea. You know, maybe I'll spring this on my my uh, my players at some point. Uh, that you know, if we have an off week or whatever, uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll write it up and run it. <laughs> hey, one other suggestion for it though. Yeah, I would I would go with uh, the monsters. I would do a role for aberration, giant, demonic, undead. I, th I thought we did. Oh, did. did we? That was yeah. on the table, yeah. That's how I got my plant monster, wasn't it? Yes. Um, I, I wasn't sure how it was divided, so okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. If there was something where uh, it could be a monster in place of something, I would have you roll on the monster table, which is what? Blake ended up getting the plant because his antagonist was going to be a plant monster. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Or a monster. No, then good idea. I, I think we ought to do it again. Yeah. Oh, this, this was fun. This was I, think, I, think, I think it might have helped to have the tables published for the people watching just so that they could have a better idea of exactly, like make these available somehow. Hey, if you guys tweet at Murder Hobo a lot, I will send Frank the actual full... Tables all completely written out, and uh, as well as connections, because uh, I did, as all great DMs do, steal from other people, and I stole their random lists as well. <laughs> we, well, I, well I, I, I guess maybe it would have been more helpful to, to explain what we were rolling for when we were rolling. Yeah, uh, like, yeah. yeah instead, instead of just roll three D three D eights, with what what each one was supposed to be. Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah, at least, maybe. At least to that effect, because that way you can still come up with your own table. <laughs> but yeah, fun, fun exercise. I like. Oh yeah, it. oh yeah, but definitely fun. Okay. And now, 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 my urethra is just like shrinking though, thinking about a rock grub getting in there. Uh. <laughs> Did a reverse man, man burns tip of penis in Lafayette, Indiana, <laughs> on hallucination. <laughs> oh, I don't have that. I don't have the good peyote. <laughs> Now, Chris, right, if you're guys. watching, can you send him something from Canada? <laughs> guys, that's the end of the show. Watch uh, this Saturday. We're going to go back to the campaign. Perhaps you will see the return of Dewey the Lie Barbarian with his trusty partner. Perhaps you'll see the demise of Dewey the Lie Barbarian. <laughs> the demise. You can't be a hero in a murder hobo world. <laughs> You know, you I can't have to phone assume phone a new person a persona. Because <laughs> I am still hanging out. I'm still in close proximity. I just feel like you should be more that hard. That's a I terrible thing. I haven't abandoned you yet. <laughs> yet. All right, guys. But Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at the YouTube channel. Buy crap if you want it. If not, you don't have to, but it looks really cool. Uh-huh. And, you know, uh, 
on Twitter. If you want to get the random tables, go ahead and message that on Twitter. And or uh, you, you, you've got a Twitter account. No, nobody uses it. Right. I about well, that. yeah, but we want to, we want to get, we want the exposure, Frank. We want. Oh, the that's true. That's true. Yeah. Tweet at Murder Elbow Inc. And by exposure, I don't mean I don't mean Kyle taking his pants off again. Yeah. And finally, who rocked it tonight? Go ahead and tell us on Twitter if you actually bothered to watch it all the way to this point. Otherwise, everybody wave. We've already had our last goodbyes. Those of you going through heroin withdrawal, I hope you think of it, of rock grubs burrowing out of your skin. Are you there, hon? <laughs> <laughs>